Hey Murray, are you happy that you are making common cause with the SNP when this is not an issue that affects Scotland, perhaps as, as directly as many people would think would be a, a germane issue to, to campaign on? Well, it's right to say that Sunday trading in Scotland is completely deregulated. It has been since 1994. But you don't have to listen to Callum or myself with regards to the effect on Scottish workers. You have to listen to the USDA Trade Union, who have been getting representations from tens of thousands of their own members saying that they will lose their terms and conditions for working on a Sunday. So it's important here. This isn't just a political thing, but the two things that do fall from this is you're absolutely right. The Conservatives are majority. So if they can't persuade their own backbenchers to vote for this, then they won't get any of this legislation through. But the other thing to mention here is that the SNP have been trying to do a dirty deal with the Conservatives on this particular bill for the last few months. Angus Robertson, the Westminster leader here for the SNP, said in December he would absolutely not vote for this legislation. It took them till very late last night to say that they wouldn't. So you can draw from that that they're willing to protect English foxes when they said that they wouldn't vote for fox hunting changes in England that only brought it into line with Scotland, but they weren't willing to protect shop workers. I think they've got serious questions to answer about the games they're playing in here that they aren't protecting Scottish people. Now, I think you returned from Canada early to take part in this vote, didn't you? Uh, I think in Canada, Sunday trading is the norm, isn't it? Depends which province you're in, actually, um, if I'm right in saying that about Sunday trading. But I have returned early because this is a matter of principle here. Scottish workers in my constituency who work in Tesco's and Asda's and other big shops may lose their Sunday supplement because of the UK-wide headquarters for these um, shop units and these companies. Usdaw have said they'll lose it, so I'm standing up for shop workers. I only wish the Conservatives and the SNP would have done the same. Jeremy Purvis, as far as the Liberal Democrats are concerned, do you have worries that actually Scottish workers, if this becomes UK-wide, that people can shop for longer on Sunday, will we lose some of those premium payments? Well, the contractual obligations for someone who lives in, in, in Maria in the borders but works in Tesco and Berwick, or someone who's in Berwick and works in Asda and Gala Shields, they're not going to be affected by what Callum said. So I think constitutionally he's wrong. Uh, on the basis of the contractual requirements, but also goes to a deeper issue. I actually probably, uh, uniquely among these, have voted on Scottish legislation for Sunday trading in Scotland. I was a member of the Scottish Parliament. And at no stage, at any of that proposal, did the SNP make any of these arguments then. Uh, I suspect Ian's probably right. They started this process with one position and they've ended it with another when they've seen a political opportunity. But I'm not surprised, because that's the position that uh, they completely U-turned at the general election from when they said they weren't going to be voting English issues. They do wish to, st wish to stoke grievance. My only problem, my only problem is this, is that at the moment it's shop workers who are they claiming to defend. If it didn't suit their political purposes, it would be someone else. Because they didn't start with this, they didn't start with this position at, when they knew that the facts then, and they didn't start with it when I was voting on this in the Scottish Parliament. So the rank hypocrisy for them is shameful. But sometimes an opposition party's duty is to oppose. But opposition to whom? Opposition for whom? For what basis is this being done? I mean, yes, OK, it's shop workers at the moment, but they will be dropped like a hot stone if it didn't suit their constitutional purpose. Because what about other sectors where there's a differential for devolution? What about public sector workers? What about those who are bin men and bin lorry? What about nurses? Because at the moment, the SNP are saying that they want wage differentials. They crow about wage differentials in the police service. They crow about wage differentials in the public services. Why not contractual guarantees to protect them, as they're saying for shop workers, Callum? Callum... Okay, how much of this is that you were worried that you might be what you would see on the wrong side of your argument? If you abstained or you supported the UK government, the people like Ian Murray in the Scottish election campaign would say, ah, you're propping up the Tories at Westminster. That wouldn't play terribly well in a Holyrood election, would it? I, I think the, the important thing about this, let, let's focus on, on what the issue is here. The Tories are trying to do something. They're, it's going to undermine people's pay. That's the general consensus amongst the whole thing. Not and what we have, we have three political parties here all taking the opportunity to attack the SNP on this. Nobody has a problem with Ian Murray voting on this. Nobody has a problem with the Northern Irish MPs on this. Uh, voting on this. Been uh, on we this. have taken our time. We have uh, established, uh, talked with the retailers, talked with the government to see if they would make concessions that would allay the fears around about protection of workers games. in this Scotland. And we have SNP done that. Playing. And the government has refused to meet what are really quite reasonable suggestions from the SNP around about this. If anyone is to blame for this, it is the government. We have tried to protect Scottish workers a along, and we have failed because the government here is intransigent. Uh, Alberto Costa, uh, how damaging will it be if the government is defeated on this this afternoon? David, it's right that the viewers this afternoon see once and for all the rank hypocrisy, as Jeremy and I have both put it, of the SNP. This is a game that the SNP are playing. I respect Ian's position. 
It is a position he's adopted for a long time. This is not the position of the SNP. The position of the SNP is to play games. They want to create grievance where there is none. They're in charge of Scotland. There's a £15 billion deficit from 2014-2015. That's where they should be focusing their attention on, not in playing games here in Westminster. Ian Murray, briefly, do you think you will win this afternoon? Well, it looks as if there is a significant rebellion on the Conservative backbenches because they're uncomfortable with this as well. We have to remember there's a lot of people in England and Wales who really don't want this uh, to go through. But it's absolutely right. The SNP came out immediately after the general election and said they supported English votes for English laws. They then said they wouldn't vote. They would vote to bring down fox hunting changes in England and Wales mm -hmm. that were only equalising it with Scotland. It is rank hypocrisy and they're playing games with shop workers Final in Scotland. Final word to Jeremy Purvis uh, and final answer from you briefly, please. Is this going to put the matter to bed one way or another? Uh, no, because if the SNP carry on this position, it'll be for all workers. But what we've not heard today, which I'm trying to ask them, is whether or not the way that they're going to be voting today will apply to all workers across all sectors. They've said no, so it's purely political purposes. Jeremy Purvis, thank you very much. Thank you also to you, Ian Murray, Albert Costa, and Callum McKay. Thank you for that. Somehow, I think we could probably carry on till Sunday about talking about this issue, but we can't. Gordon, back to you in the studio.